What up, what up, what up? It's your boy ARP, Rebel Entertainment is the movement. We're about to jump into this prediction block. Big salute and shout out to King of the Dot, the whole staff over there, Organic, Bishop, Gully, King Fly, bringing the decade card. Think about how many platforms have been around that long. Now also think about all the platforms that surround and how many remained at the top of the battle rap culture since they got here. There's platforms, there's leagues that are just existing. They're just there. They don't really put in that work. They don't really put in that consistency, that grind. King of the Dot has been one of the leaders in the battle rap culture since they got here. So we all need to salute and praise this decade card. First one up, Math Hopper versus Thesaurus. And the reason why that shit makes me laugh a little bit is because, you know, if you know the history behind that battle, it's been booked like three or four times. So the strongest angle in this battle, obviously, is the history about it. Why it didn't go down three or four times? What's been put out there to the public is really what's going to land on stage. So Thesaurus, being a charismatic, funny guy that he is, you know, he's a veteran up there. He's got the freestyle and the rebuttal capabilities. He's a legend in the game. We know what Thesaurus does. I think the main angle of the battle plays to the Saurus because all the fans have heard is that math didn't make the battles. I think the X fact on math side has nothing to do with angles. I think it has to do with how his 2018 played out. Look at the first half of the year for math. By the time he got through those three battles in a row, King of the Dot, URL, RBE. I said, that's all. I ain't know what he meant. I said, define that. He said, when we'll sleep, we check him out of them. She sucked me friend. We tell her to wheel up. We have to come again. He <laughs> arguably won three battles in three weeks, back to back to back. Remember, he was on the campaign for champion of the year. Then Matt gets to the ab battle. And just that fast, when the fans and the battle rap culture puts you on these pedestals, they'll knock you the fuck off. The fans and the bloggers be at him ASAP, like one little slip and they on him. I don't think he was motivated for this match back then initially when it was booked. But now, considering how his 2018 has panned out, when it comes to math, he knows at this point in his career, every match matters. I'm gonna take those two X factors, being that this is a style clash, and I'm gonna edge it to math 2-1. Jims versus Sharon. This is a very good matchup for both of these guys. Flat out, Jims could be in a lot of trouble. It really has to do with Jims' career path. You got people like Rich Dollars, Cortez, Shotgun Shook, um, Averb, Sirius Jones, Goods, DNA, Math. But here's the catch to almost every single one of those battles. Jims was the clear underdog. Jims was also looked at as an up-and-comer during the time of all of those battles. If you win that type of battle, it's automatically amplified. If you lose that type of battle, it's like, ah, it's not, it's not that big of a deal as long as you put on. And Jims never chokes. He always shows up with his A game. Those days are over now. Jims no longer gets to sit in the comfort of an up-and-comer. Think about it. This type of matchup right here, nobody's saying that Jims is getting a shot. It's just a good matchup at this point. That's how many battles he's been through and how his career has finally progressed to this point right here. It's the spot that he's earned, but now it's a gift and a curse. Now to add to that on Sharon's side, number one, this is a battle that Sharon has been asking for. Number two, Sharon has always been one of the most difficult guys to battle because of his image. If you never met Sharon or you never knew him, What's your first impression of him? It's not the image that you see on stage. This is a guy that like tries to slap off people's hats. This is a guy that's standing in front of people's faces talking about look at me while I'm killing you. This is a guy that's trying to pull out people's gang flags in front of their face. We need to put an end to this grape on grape crime. <laughs> he thinks I'm a fake crip who's giving the folks lies. But little does he know, I've been cripping this whole time. He wants street battles. He wants to face a K-Shawn or Arsenal or Head Ice. Behind the scenes, Sharon is asking for Calico. Sharon's image has an advantage in front of street guys. That's not his perception. So when he comes out blacking out and talking street shit to you, or if he's aggressive, or he starts talking to you in the third round, all that shit gets hyped up. That's a tough disadvantage to be in front of. A guy with that type of image, but is willing to rap to you the way that he'll rap to you. Then when you toss in the rebuttal and the freestyle ability, for Jims to be in this fight, this is more of the time for him to be the charismatic Jims. My mother made me take this battle. <laughs> so I can get with a Canadian chick, so I ain't gotta pay healthcare. <laughs> but are we about to talk about Jesus? 
Hell yeah! yeah. So unless Jims finds a way to outdo Sharon at his own game, I got Sharon 2-1. A Ward versus Poe Rich. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. I'm not as familiar with Poe Rich. I did pull up some recent footage of him versus D Rose. I like his style. Um, he will get in your face a bit, drop some angles. But man, A Ward, I mean, from what I've seen from Poe Rich, it just feels like A Ward might be a higher level than him. We can't ignore A Ward's come up, and we're not going to sweep things under the rug like his Geechee battle. The man has been putting on in all his recent showings, so. From what I've seen on Poe Rich and from what I know of A-Ward, I'm going to go with A-Ward 2-1. Man, shout out to King of the Dot on this one. Y'all got one. Arsenal versus Pat State the rematch. I think the sickest thing about this match is the timing. You're talking about Pat State having one of his best years ever in a long time. You got his Danny battle. Crazy. You got his Verb battle. He went off in that one as well. You got his Tay Rock battle. He's got more shit coming up. Pat Stay is on a tear right now. Pat needs more mentions for the champion of the year. We got the obvious people that's at the top of the bracket. You know, the um, the K-Shines, the Geechees, the, uh, the Iron Solomons. I could keep going. I don't want to miss anybody. But Pat needs to be in that mix. Arsenal's been saying, you know, I'm back or the game has been missing my disrespect. And he's showing it. It's become stupid to count Arsenal out. Like, he's not a guy that you want to bet against. He takes a lot of matchups that fans think he's going to lose. And he either kills, wins, wins clearly. Let's talk about some of them. Look at Twerk. I don't know what people really thought going in, but look what he did. He showed up and showed out. He showed that there's levels to shit. I got him taking that battle. What about the hollow match? The Lux match. I got him beating Lux. Look at the Iron battle. That was like a week or two before Lux. He beat Iron. I'm feeling like a cooler, nigga. Everybody got their arms extended. We doing Zumba, nigga. No worries. Akuna Matata, Timon and Puma, nigga. That man shows up and he shows out. This ain't gonna be no different. Then you got the history of how that battle ended, the original one. Pat stay left. He's a pussy. We agreed on two minute rounds. And on Pat's side, there's nobody in the game that could bring to the stage what he brings. Even when it comes to charisma or comedy and being funny, Nobody can outdo Pat. And I heard he got an 11th coming. <laughs> Figured he learned a lesson from it. Maybe all your opponents pulling out last minute were trying to tell you something. <laughs> You're talking about bars that hit even as angles and still will have you crying laughing. What's crazy about Pat is he brings a formula to almost every battle and still people can't stop it. They can't do anything about it. First and second round is barring out and jokes. Third round is usually like a knife cutting angle. He does it almost every fucking battle, but how do you stop it? That type of stage presence, that type of charisma, his type of energy, you know, he can get aggressive and switch back to being funny, have the whole fucking crowd dying laughing just like this, a split second. This is gonna be an interesting matchup, and I think it's the only battle on the card I don't have a clear winner for. Cortez versus Pass. This matchup makes a lot of sense. Ball for ball, this could be battle of the night. Cortez has maybe one of my favorite third rounds ever versus Hallahan. I think I'll teach you about responsibility. Oh. Real friends help you make yourself. If I was him as a fake friend, I would hate myself. All the roids and them cocaine, I would hate my health. If I'm the reason my man's dead, I would take myself. Oh. And on pass side, another guy I've watched for years. Ball for ball, very capable of taking it there. You bugging. I knew something was up with this chubby country bumpkin when you was just a newcomer what you ain't colorblind but it's not enough y'all stole the whole culture you got the blues brother black man get green white boy turn red we see your true colors you suck i do believe that cortez edges pass out though in things like performance aggression maybe even hunger like if you look at core versus old red like his hunger his energy in a battle like that I haven't seen that level of energy from past in a second. I think the real X factor right here to this matchup is the fact that Cortez does a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole third round, just wait, we got some shit we gotta talk about or what more can I do? That type of shit that just creates big moments. Cortez does things in a battle a little bit more than past does that makes it memorable. You know, you might leave a past battle and remember like, oh, he was going off, he was snapping, but Cortez will snap and you'll also remember, like, yo, remember that angle that he did talking about Hallahan and, and, and abusing drugs? Or remember when he... That's the type of shit that I think Core has overpassed. So I got Core taking this battle 2-1 clip. And then there was one. Title match. Head Ice versus Chilla Jones. Dominance on the stage. Presence. Aggression. Aura. 
performance. You gotta give that to Head Ice. Head Ice even talks a lingo that just keeps people captivated, like shit that nobody else says and a delivery that you just don't hear anywhere else. Bar for bar, Chilla is one of the best in the game. Bar for bar, Chilla definitely got head ice. It's just his pen, his schemes, the way he push it together, the way he lands his punches. That could lead to one of the deciding factors in this matchup right here. Because the battle isn't being held in a huge place. This is more of a smaller room environment where somebody like Chilla's bars, those punches are going to hit. It could be tough. And I'm also looking at their last appearances on King of the Dot. I'm looking at Ice versus Nems, and I'm looking at Chilla versus Iron Solomon. You know, Chilla vs. Iron Solomon is a classic. You even called out Surf to make yourself buzz, but I know why you target the Crips. Why? Why? Even if nobody else does, it's why? biology. See, Iron's biggest job is to help blood, boy, you ain't never- In that type of environment with Chilla's momentum, I think you're gonna see a change of the champion right now. I think that chain is gonna go to Chilla Jones and he's gonna take this battle 2-1 in a good matchup. All right, those are my predictions. Big salute and shout out to King of the Dot. Make sure everybody's tuned in on Sunday, December 9th, pay-per-view, the King of the Dot website. I'm going to drop the link here on the screen. Everybody copy a pay-per-view, support this battle, support this platform. Decade is going down. They got some crazy matchups on there. Let's see which one of these predictions pan out. Let's see where I'm right. Let's see where I'm wrong. But salute and shout out to everybody on the card. We're going to see how this goes down. I'll see y'all then.